Well, good morning. I thought we'd just get started early so we can, you know, get through this quick, right? No. First week, or first uh, Sunday of the month, so we've got our hymn sing. So take a look through your hymnal, pick out a hymn you'd like to sing, and we can sing it together. Do we have any numbers or any hymn titles we'd like to start with? 817. 817. You have come down to the lakeshore, 817. Eight twenty. O Savior, precious Savior, eight twenty. even get up here and people are already yelling numbers at me he said 824 824 this is my father's world Oh, I wonder what 838 could be, Pastor Kathy. <laughs> oh, joyful, joyful, we adore thee. I thought it was beautiful Savior. <laughs> what? 830. Uh, 838, beautiful Savior. I got it wrong. My bad.
a pretty darn good hymn. Ooh. Do we have any others we'd like to sing? 773. Precious Lord, take my hand. 773. This is, this is very intense. This isn't another hymn, but I've just been passed an urgent bil uh, bulletin. Vern and Sandy Radloff, uh, I believe this is your 60th wedding anniversary? Oh my gosh! Well, congratulations and may God bless you with 60 more years. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. I am so glad that we get to start worship like that. It just, it fills my soul to be able to sing those beautiful hymns and to hear wonderful voices around me. So thank you for that. Uh, before we begin, well, I guess I should say, good morning. Good morning. That's how we usually do it, right? Before we begin worship, uh, we have a couple of announcements. Uh, this Tuesday, we are a polling station, so if you stop by church on Tuesday, you will see a lot of polling stuff. We just wanted to make sure everybody was aware of that uh, for the primary election. Uh, our programming registration is all out, uh, so for linked, for either Wednesday or Sunday, for confirmation, all of that is out. It's online. It was in mailings that went out uh, this week and it is on uh, the boards around church. We also have a lovely table out there uh, that has some t-shirts on it because we will be ordering some t-shirts for the anniversary. Uh, so please take a look at that table. I think the t-shirts look really cool. Um, so you can take a look and grab an order form there. Hey, Dave, yes? Uh, the shirts are blue, the samples are not. Uh, the shirts are blue. Like a bright blue, like... Right. Oh, okay, it's out there. I was gonna, I don't know. I prefer like a sport blue. Sport blue, that really narrows down the color for me, doesn't it? <laughs> but thank you. Okay, nice. Not a navy blue, but I, I think they look beautiful. I'm so, I'm so pleased with those. They look great. Um, we are looking for linked helpers, uh, those who would be willing to help either with snacks um, or with leading groups or helping to guide groups around church. Uh, so if you are interested in that, please get in touch with the church office or with Lindsay. And we are also looking for confirmation leaders. Uh, so if you are available for that, get in touch with me or with Pastor Kathy, and we can talk about how you can serve uh, serve the children and youth of this congregation. Um, I am excited because today I get to drive 10 hours to get halfway to where I'm going. I'm going to Churchwide Assembly, um, which is in uh, Columbus, Ohio. So that'll be a fun time. It will be a long week of meetings and more meetings and discussion groups and more meetings. Uh, and some worship services, and a lot more meetings. So it's a wonderful opportunity. I'm really excited because it's all about the future of the church. Where is the ELCA going? What do we need to change and improve upon? 
and how can we better serve God. So I'm really excited for it. Uh, so please keep me in your prayers. Uh, please keep the ELCA Churchwide Assembly in your prayers. Keep Eloise and Theo in your prayers that they are good kids while I'm gone. And uh, keep Alyssa in your prayers for obvious reasons. Um, added to our prayer list for this morning, we include Ted Sowers as well as everybody on our prayer list that we continue to pray for uh, to bring healing, hope, and wholeness. So I believe those are all of our announcements. So with that said, I invite you to stand as you're able and we'll join in our gathering hymn. Come, let us worship God. Come, let us worship God. Welcome, everyone, to the love of God. Rest for the weary. Rest for the weary. Welcome everyone to the love of God. Food for the hungry. Food for the hungry. Welcome everyone to the love of God. Hope for the children. Hope for the children. Welcome everyone. To the love of God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seat at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sin, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We join in our Kyrie.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace that we may be ready to receive you wherever you appear. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Just a simpler trusting in your love for me. For when I give up, I gain. When I let go of having my own way. When I learn to see my surrender as a brand new start. To know the fullness of my Father's The first reading today is from Genesis chapter 15, verses 1 to 6. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. 
But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars. If you are able to count them, then he said to him, so shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Word of God, word of life. Thank you, God. The second reading today is from Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 1 to 3 and 8 to 16. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the words were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old. And Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven, and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of the, these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth. For the people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. Word of God, word of life. Thank you, God. Please stand as you are able for the gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to Luke chapter 12. Jesus said, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet 
so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Tr truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated, and kids, come on up. Come on up. So good to have you here today. <laughs> well, how are you girls doing? Yeah. Good. Well, today we have a part of our Bible verses. They say that God is, comes at unexpected times. When we're not really looking for God, God just shows up. And so today, after this really great, beautiful rain we've had, I thought this would be a really great day to say and ask this question, where have you seen God lately? Where have you seen God's love or God's gifts or the joy of God lately. Can you, can you think of times where you think God has shown up? I think God showed up in this really great rain, don't you? Because it nourished and watered our lawns and our crops. So that's God's gift, isn't it? Can you think of any other gifts from God? Um, trees. Oh my goodness, we've really needed trees during the heat, haven't we? Because they give us shade. Yeah, they do other things too, but they give us shade. Anything else you can think of that God's given us that sometimes we forget? Food. That Food. Yes, we have enough to eat. That's a real blessing from God, isn't it? And sometimes we just take it for granted because there are people who don't have enough to eat, aren't there? So that is the way God blesses us. Can you think of anything else or do you think we should ask those people out there? You think we should ask those people out there? I do too. So I think they deserve our help. So where have you seen God showing up this past week? In the sunshine. The rain. Oh, in caregivers. God definitely shows up in caregivers. Families. God has shown up in our families. I've seen God showing up here because this week I got to take a prayer shawl to someone. So it wasn't just me bringing a prayer shawl. It was all of you bringing a prayer shawl to a member of our congregation. So God was definitely showing up in that visit. Anybody else? Where is God showing up this week? Sometimes in unexpected places. What? In the wind? Yeah, in the wind. I was wondering, did anyone receive a hug this week? Hugs? I think God shows up in those hugs to make sure we know we're, we're loved. Did anybody have um, somebody wipe a tear away this week? God shows up when somebody's there to bring us comfort. But God shows up in all sorts of places. And we're reminded of that today in what Jesus teaches us. So let's have a prayer together, and you can repeat after me, and that goes for all of you. Dear Lord, thank you for showing up in unexpected places. Amen. You may be seated. Thanks for coming up today. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So how many of you have ever ended your day and you said to yourself, oh, I should have gotten so much more done today. Oh, I have so much work left to do. Anybody? That happens, doesn't it? Or we say to ourselves, oh, I should have done this instead of that. Life seems to go at such a frantic pace that there's really never enough time for all of the things we think we should do. We question ourselves and how we spend our time. 
seems like we're always trying to get ahead or trying to measure up and get it right and cross everything off our list. We have this attitude that permeates our thinking that we have to work more hours to get ahead, that we need to get our kids to this camp and that camp. We need the latest technology so we can keep up. Our home repair projects are endless. There always is some kind of list that we live by. I mean, even the fun things in our, in our world have become a list because now we have bucket lists and we start crossing off the things that we've seen or experienced on our bucket list. Today's gospel can almost sound like another to-do list that we're to accomplish as God's people. And of course, we just don't accomplish that perfectly, and so we wonder if we ever measure up. Jesus says, do not be afraid. And I think, does he know what's been on the news lately or all the problems in this world? Jesus said, sell all your possessions. Really? All of our possessions? And then be ready. Be ready for the Son of Man will come when you least expect it. When we hear this list of the things that we are to do, it's so easy to forget about grace, isn't it? And as Lutherans, we talk a lot about grace. We are saved by grace through faith. It's not our own doing to be saved, but God's work through Jesus that saves us. So why do we sometimes feel like our faith is another to-do list in order to gain God's favor? or in order to gain God's kingdom? Why does it seem sometimes like we have to do things just right in order to be part of God's kingdom, in order to be ready? I think if we look carefully at this scripture today, we can see it as a kind of to-do list if we leave out this part. It is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God wants good things for you. God wants really good things for you. And that's grace. We don't have to earn it. We don't have to prove ourselves worthy of it. Have no fear, little flock. It is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God doesn't want to give us just a few things. God doesn't want to wait to give us good things until we've done everything else just right or we've somehow earned the kingdom. God wants to give us the kingdom and all the good things that come with it right now. Things that we read about in scripture. God wants to give us peace that passes all understanding. God wants to give us the joy of the Lord that becomes our strength. God wants to give us love, the unconditional love that changes us. God wants to give us a purpose to use and share our gifts each day. God wants to give us rest, rest for our weary souls. That is the kingdom God wants for us. Knowing that this is what God wants for us, doesn't that change how we hear this scripture today? We can hear this list of things from Scripture differently when we look at it through God's desire to give us the kingdom. I think if we look at it this way, it's helpful. God is like a parent teaching a child. So as parents, we teach our children because we only want what's best for them, right? And so we tell them, well, you have to go to school and you have to do your homework even though you hate math or you hate this or that, you have to do your work because we know as parents that's what's best for them. Or we set boundaries with our kids about what they can watch on TV, what time they have to go to bed, where they can go and who they can go with. And in the end, our kids, as they move into adulthood, are usually really thankful they've had parents who made them do that work or set those boundaries. So this is the attitude that Jesus has today as he's teaching his disciples. He, everything he says, he says and wants us to do because it is what's best for us. 
not because he wants us to earn his love or to earn salvation. Jesus teaches us these things because it's good for us and because he wants us to have an abundant life. So if we think of God wanting to give us the kingdom, the kingdom right now, and yes, the kingdom of heaven someday, but the kingdom right now, the thing Jesus teaches us today are things that will help us live into that, to have an abundant life, the kind of life God wants for us. These things give us purpose, and they give us meaning, and they give us hope. So let's, let's look at this to-do list from Scripture. First of all, Jesus says, have no fear. I mean, God wants us to quit worrying. It's not good for us. Do not fear, Jesus said. Shortly before these verses in Luke, Jesus tells the disciples, do not worry about your life, what you will wear, or what you will eat, because after all, God feeds the ravens, and look at the lilies of the field, so how much more will God care for you? So don't worry. Trust in God. Be responsible, yes, but this frantic pace of work and success and the temptation to always measure ourselves against each other, we don't have to do that because with God, we measure up just fine. We don't need bigger titles. We don't need more money. We don't need more experiences to prove that we are worthy. So instead of accumulating stuff and trying to live up to the world's expectations for you and their definition of success, trust in God that you're enough. And you see, I think when you do that, what that allows us to do is to live in the present. And enjoy the days and the moments we're given. Because we don't know what tomorrow brings. But when we trust, we can enjoy those moments and we can be content with where we are. The second item on that list that Jesus talks about is to sell all your possessions. You know, give yourself away. God doesn't want us to be consumed by greed and the love of material things. Because those things do not bring real happiness. Do we literally have to sell everything? No. But God is saying, be generous, because those things, to keep accumulating, it will not bring you the joy you're looking for. Instead, God wants us to enjoy our lives, to have an abundant life, and that comes from loving God and loving each other. That was, is what will bring us joy. Have you noticed how generous people are usually happy people? I mean, I know there are some people who can give large amounts of money. We have a mom scholarship here, a legacy from a family that keeps on giving. Most of us won't be able to do that. But we can give what we can give to make a difference, to be generous, but we also give our time we give words of encouragement. We give kindness. All of those things that we can do and give generously, and what we find from that is that brings us joy, and that gives us an abundant life. I think you find that the more you give in all of these ways, the more you want to give, because giving enriches your life. I think Jesus is telling us it's good for us to give. And I think it's important, too, to note that when we give, whether it's financially or time or even encouragement, we're working to make sure that others will have enough, too. That's what Jesus is teaching us. And it's true. When we give ourselves away for the sake of the gospel, it brings joy to our life. It actually helps us live an abundant life the more we give. The third thing on that list that Jesus talks about is this command to be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. I mean, that almost seems scary, doesn't it? But it's not. I mean, we are baptized, beloved children of God. We have been saved by grace. Our future is secure we know that one day we will be in the kingdom of heaven with God. 
So what if this scripture isn't just about end times, but it is about right now? It is about Jesus teaching us to be ready for God comes to us in our daily lives, not just for the future, but in our daily white lives in ways that might surprise us. God often comes, I think, in ways that surprise us because God comes to us in our generosity and instead of our accumulation. God comes to us often as we gather in community as opposed to looking out only for ourselves. God comes to us when we're willing to be vulnerable and open with people and be in equal relationships as opposed to coming to people with force and strength and having things our own way. I think it's easy to miss the times that God is showing up, mostly because we just don't pay attention. And other times we're simply looking for something else. We're looking for something bigger and better, something where the grass is greener on the other side, when really the kingdom of God is right here. It is right here in the tear of someone that you have helped. It is right here in the hug you received that brought you comfort. It's right here when you look out your window and you see a neighbor helping a neighbor. Look for those times each day. Listen for those times where God is showing up because that is God bringing his kingdom here. There is the not yet kingdom of heaven, but God's kingdom is also right here. When you have faith that it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, you will hear these commands less as a to-do list and more as Jesus showing us what God's kingdom looks like here on earth, what an abundant, joyful life looks like here on earth. And so it looks like letting go of our worries, of trying to measure up, of trying to control everything. It looks like giving ourselves away our time, our talent, our financial resources, our words of kindness and encouragement. And it looks like paying attention to the ways God's kingdom comes to us in ways that sometimes surprise us. Now, I know that knowing this doesn't necessarily make it easy to live it. When so much of life is filled by demands that work against our faith, when there are so many things that worry us. But we can trust that this is true. Jesus tells us this because this is what will give us an abundant life. And I think because it is difficult to live it and trust it, I think it's why we need this place, don't you? Because this is the place where we're encouraged and equipped to live our faith. We're encouraged in worship, but we're also encouraged in this way. Martin Luther once described the church as a place of conversation and consolation. The church as a place of conversation and consolation. Think of all the times that happens here. In worship, yes, but it happens at coffee hour. It happens at mission circle. It happens at men's group. It happens at confirmation. It happens on the bus ride to the water park or to Valley Fair. This is a place of conversation and consolation because we need each other, and God knew that. We need this time as a place to help us grow in our faith, to learn from each other so that we can live our faith. And we need this time and we need each other to support and pray for one another. It is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God wants good things for you and good things for your neighbors. Jesus teaches us today to live into that promise. So no, whatever worries are consuming you, place them in God's hand and trust. Know that giving yourself away is not about earning God's love. It's about how God's kingdom comes to us in our generosity and in knowing that our giving will help our neighbor. 
And this too, begin each day, begin each day with the attitude that you're going to notice where God comes to you in small and big ways. This isn't a to-do list. It's a promise. Or maybe like with Martha and Mary a few weeks ago, it's an invitation. This is a promise that it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Open your hearts and believe and trust that promise. Amen. We are going to sing, um, Have No Fear, Little Flock. Please stand as you are able. Now with those same thankful hearts, we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon our faith and trust in you. We cannot earn your love, your forgiveness, or your peace because you give it to us freely. It is your good pleasure. Bless us with abundant faith and send us out to share that faith. Open our eyes to your kingdom among us where you show up in the unexpected. We give you thanks for this abundant and precious life. Lord, we pray. Let your loving kindness be upon your world. Be our helper and our shield in places torn by strife and violence. Raise up courage, courageous leaders to govern with compassion and justice. 
We pray especially for the work of the ELCA Churchwide Assembly. May all our work be a blessing upon the church, the world, and all peoples. Lord, we pray. Let your loving kindness be upon your children. <clears throat> Look upon all who wait for your steadfast love. Console those who grieve and embrace those who cry out to you, especially Audrey, Russ, Jason, Dixie, Joan, Brad, Randy, Sharon, Joyce, Ken, Anne, Kane, uh, Dave, Tom, George, Carol, Annette, Pam, Sharon, Marion, Dave, Ted, and all that we lift up now out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Help us to trust your promise and to not be afraid. Lord, we pray. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. This morning, our offering won't, uh, we won't pass the plates around, but we do have offering plates uh, at the front here and over by that door, so you can place your offering as you come forward for communion. So with that, let's join in singing our offertory song. Let us pray. God of wisdom, in your Son, Jesus, you show us the way of life. You teach us to love one another and to share the gifts of our lives. Receive these gifts, fruit of the earth, and harvest of our labor, and lead us always by your wise guiding. Amen. Please be seated. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The meal is ready. Christ is the host. Come as you are. All are welcome. Please stand for the communion blessing and prayer. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. 
Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. And receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing our sending hymn, Blessed Assurance. Make sure you stay for coffee and donuts today. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.